Hello and welcome back to the Techery. Today we will be looking at Paint.net, a free graphics and image editing software similar to GIMP. I highly recommend this software and have been using it for many years and have quite a bit of experience with it. So to begin the installation process, open your web browser of choice, which for me is Google Chrome, and paste the first link in the description into the URL bar and hit enter. Scroll to the bottom of the page and as you can see here, there are two options. You can download either from Microsoft Store or from this website. The Microsoft Store is a paid version, however I'm going to be installing the free version here today, so hit this. Now go up to the top of the page, ignoring all these adverts, and hit that. Save to your downloads folder and wait for the download to complete. Once the download is completed, show in folder and extract all. Extract and run the installer. Select continue. The installer will now run. Select express, next, I agree, next. And paint.net will begin to install. Paint.net is now installed and hit finish and paint.net will now launch. You'll be presented with a blank canvas, which is what this white square in the middle is called. I'm going to run through some of the core buttons and features, so let's get into it. So let's begin at the top with file. File is where you control all file functions, for instance, opening and saving your work. In edit, you have many generalized commands. Although you can use this drop down, I suggest to improve workflow that you use the keyboard shortcuts shown on the right. Then you have view, which is where all the features for manipulating your workspace to make it easier to complete certain tasks like zooming in and out. Next up we have image, which is where you manipulate the whole image, changing sizes, flipping and rotating. For instance, when I make a YouTube thumbnail, I select canvas size and put 1280 by 720, which is the ratio for YouTube thumbnails. Next up, we have layers. We're going to sk skip over these as most of the options will be covered down here when I get to that. In adjustments, this is where you correct colors and make overarching changes to certain aspects of the image. Finally, we have effects. This is where all your special effects are and can be used to add little things to certain aspects of your image. This is the window I use most often when making thumbnails by adding blurs to add depth to the image. Under this, you have other core buttons. These can be seen in these drop downs and are just here for quick access. Now let's head on to tools. In the toolbar, specific tools can be selected. So the three on the left are all selection tools, rectangle, lasso select and eclipse select. These are so you can select different areas in different ways to suit your needs. Then we have the magic wand. The magic wand selects areas using AI to remove backgrounds, to remove foregrounds, or to remove anything that you would like to be removed. On the right, we have two move tools. The top one moves the background or the pixel selected. The bottom one moves the selection area. Next we have pan and zoom. These are self-explanatory, so I won't be covering them. Next we have the paint bucket and all the other drawing and painting tools. The paint bucket fills an area. So if we select red down here, it will color the whole area. Whereas a paintbrush will only go where your mouse cursor is. This is much the same as a pencil. However, there is a big difference between the pencil and the paintbrush. There is a gradient outline around the paintbrush, whereas the pencil paints solid colour. Next we have the gradient, the rubber, 
and the color picker. The rubber rubs out wherever the mouse cursor is. The size can be changed up here. Gradient creates a gradient of whatever color you want in whatever shape you want. And the eyedropper, you can use it to click and select the color. We're going to skip over these two for a future video. Then we have text. Text just allows you to add text to an image as normal. We have the line and curve tool, which allows you to easily make lines and curves. And then finally we have the shape tool. The shape can be selected up here from a palette of many. You can select the fill mode and you can make your shape. The next section I'm going to cover is the layers panel. A layer is essentially a part of an image. Everything is on its own layer. Well it can be. This is for easy manipulation of the image. So say we've got this black square. We add a new layer with this button down here. We make another square but this square is red. We can now switch between the red square being on the top and the black square being on the top. We also have duplication in case that is needed and we also have merge so you can add them all onto the same layer. Also rename your layer and select blend mode in the layer properties panel. Next we have history. History is where you can undo anything that you have previously done by selecting one of your history items from the list. Next we have the colors panel which is where you can select whatever color you want using sliders or the color wheel or the selection below. All of these can be put anywhere on your screen to suit your style and can also be toggled at the top with these buttons. So I have just made this creation of a play button. I know it's really simple but it's just for the video. Go up to file save as and you can now save it as any of these formats so a pdn file it can still be edited in all its layers whereas all the other files you're compressing it down so say we select p and g to hit save it wants to you to configure it and then hey presto png has been made well thanks for watching everyone i hope you've learned something this video please consider subscribing if this helped goodbye